Hello and good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to another Kids Connection program. I am so happy that you've decided to join us today. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. Today, we're going to be connecting with God and some interesting stories about the Israelites. And we're going to be talking about faith today. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be a fun adventure. I'm going to do an experiment and you guys are going to share that. You guys are going to see that. And hopefully mom and dad can help you see how that works at home too, if you have the ingredients. Okay, so stick around. Let's get our program started. We have a lot happening today right here at Kids Connection, as well as Vallejo Drive Church. Stay tuned. At the end, I'm going to be talking about what's happening at Vallejo Drive Church today, this afternoon. So don't go anywhere. Let's get our program started by singing our song of the day because I'm trusting you. Let's sing it together. This was a fun song. I remember this is actually one of the most favorite songs that all the kids really enjoy singing here at Kids Connection. Keep coming back during the week and sing this song again. It's going to be on our page here on the very bottom of our Kids Connection page so we can sing it again and again later in the week. Thank you for singing with us. I invite you now to close your eyes, bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear God, Thank you so much for another Kids Connection program. We invite you to be a part of this program now as we worship your name. 
Thank you for all the boys and girls that are watching at home, moms and dads, grandpas, grandpa, grandmas, and aunts and uncles, the whole family. Thank you so much. Whoever is watching us right now, we ask that you bless each one of them as we worship together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for praying with us, for joining us for another program. Now we're going to watch a story of someone who didn't know Jesus. And then he met a friend that had a special invitation for him. And after that, his life changed. And what is he doing now as he continues to share the love of God with other people? Let's watch our missionary story for today. I was living in an unacceptable way to God. As a young man, I began attending parties and drinking. I was also going to clubs. One day, I was at home watching TV when a pastor came on and said, if you ask God to show you his true people, he will show you his church. I didn't know how to talk to God or how to pray, but that night I prayed that God would show me his true church. That was Friday night. The very next morning as I went to fetch water, I met a friend who asked me where I was going. I told him that I was taking a shower to go out so he invited me to go to church with him. I said, yeah, sure. Then I finished getting water, showered, and went to church with him. I've been in that church ever since and was baptized on May 1st, 2010. I work as a barber. It's from this profession that God blesses me with an income to pay my transport to Caldera, where I go as a missionary. I first went there to preach and I simply fell in love with the people. So I asked my church to send me there as an assistant. Shortly after I arrived, the leader left and I became the main person to head this ministry. It's been a difficult journey, but God goes before me. It can cost me 80,000 dobras round trip. When I can't afford this, God gives me the strength to take the bike taxi there and walk the way back. When it's a week of prayer, I do it alone. I go there without anyone. Sometimes the meetings go until 8 or 9 because many people have questions, and I don't like to leave anyone with doubts. So I walk back with God's company. He is the only one who can keep me safe. I arrive safely. Nothing has happened to me. God has always guided me. The people of Caldera are lovely and like to listen to God's word. Our biggest challenge is the lack of a shelter to worship in. On Wednesdays and Fridays, we worship under a solar-powered light. On Sabbaths, we worship in a tiny house. We are praying that God will bless us to get a roof and shelter. Jesus left us a mission. He said, go ye into all the world, making disciples and preaching the gospel to all creatures, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This motivates me to take the message of God to this remote group of people. May God's Spirit bless us to further the work in Caldera and to reach the communities around it. If you are watching this video, please pray that God's Spirit will assist us to win this battle and be able to preach the gospel. The missionary stories are always amazing and it's so nice to see how people are preaching the love of God to other people in other places of the world and how they are devoted uh, to preach and to be missionaries and how much they need our help. So if you haven't done it, please ask mom and dad to donate to the missionaries, clicking on the link above here where it says donate to the missionaries uh, around the world. Thank you so much. Now, today we're going to be talking about faith. And I'm going to try to explain a little bit about faith in a different way to you guys. Let me ask you something. Have you ever gone to the doctor? And when you get to the doctor, the doctor says, well, um, I need to see your throat. Can you open your mouth and say, uh, have you done that? 
and he asks you to stick stick your tongue out, right? So it goes, uh, why does the doctor ask you to do that? Do you know? Well, I learned something this week because I wasn't too sure. I, I thought I knew and I knew one of the things, but I didn't know the other. Well, let me share this with you. And hopefully next time you go to the doctor, you'll remember this. Um, the doctor asks you to say, ah, with your mouth open because he wants to check the muscles inside of your, by, by your throat, all the way in the back. He wants to see if those muscles are vibrating and they are working properly. So when you say, ah, uh, the muscles vibrate on the walls and they want to make sure that you, that everything is working okay. Now, another interesting fact is that, do you know what a uvula is? Well, a, the uvula is that little thing that hangs on the back of your throat right? All the way inside when you open your mouth, when you open your mouth, um, when you have a chance, look yourself in the mirror and open your mouth really wide. And you're going to see that pendulum hanging on the back of your throat. That's called the uvula. Now, the doctor looks at your uvula because he wants to see the shape of your uvula. It has to be uh, like on a punching bag shape and the color has to be like reddish pink to make sure that you are healthy and if that's how your uvula is then you're healthy but sometimes our uvula is not on that punching bag shape it is uh, lopsided and if it is lopsided or sometimes it even has some dots on it that means that you could have sinus or you could be coughing or have been coughing a lot and that's how the doctor knows that you are, uh, if you make sure that you are sick, that you're well and you're not sick is by looking in your throat and they know that how you are and your health is. Now you know, next time you go to the doctor, you remember this. Yes, the doctor is checking my uvula and he's also checking the muscles on your, on your throat. And that's how he knows you are healthy. It, that makes sure, he wants to make sure that you're healthy. Now, the thing is, even though you don't know why the doctor asked you to open your mouth and say, ah, in front of him, you do it anyways. Why do you do it? Well, when the doctor asked me to do that, I do it because I know he is a doctor and he knows what he's doing. And I know that he's looking for my best well-being. And by doing that, he knows what he's doing. And that is called faith. Faith is believing in something even though you don't know what it is or you know that the doctor is doing the best to make sure that you are okay. That is being having faith. Now, in our story today, we're going to learn about faith. And we're going to learn how the Israelites had to have faith. Now, I'm going to share something else with you. Um, let me bring a couple things here at the table so I can, I can um, do a little experiment and help you guys understand uh, something else. And here we have it. In front of me, I have a jar, clear jar, with a little bit of baking soda inside, just so you know. I also have vinegar here. Now, a mixture of baking soda and vinegar creates something. I'm going to be talking about that in a second. But, and I also have a box of matches. These are long matches. Look at this. All right, so these are fireplaces matches. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do. And with mom or dad assistance at home, and if you have the ingredients, you can also do this to see how it works. Now, check this out. I'm going to grab vinegar, and I'm going to pour some vinegar inside of this jar with baking soda in it. 
confetti. There we go. There we go. And I think that's going to do it just fine. We're going to shake this a little bit. All right. Now you see the baking soda mixing with the vinegar on the bottom? There you go. Is that all you see? Now, watch this. I'm going to light this match. And I'm going to put it inside. Wait, let's make sure that we have a nice flame going. Okay, here we go. Now, watch what happens when I put this match inside of the jar. Ready? Whoa. What was that? Did you see that? You want to see it again? Watch this. Let's wait for all that smoke to go away, to clear out. Ready? Here it is. Here is the match. There's nothing inside this jar. But when I put the match inside the jar, it goes out. Why did that happen? Well, this is science. And now I'm gonna try to explain to you what happened here. The combination of vinegar and baking soda creates something that it's called carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a mixture of these two ingredients that creates a gas and this gas is called carbon dioxide. What happens with carbon dioxide? Well, carbon dioxide doesn't have oxygen in it and it's heavier than oxygen. Now, as we all know, oxygen is needed to create fire. And if the fire is taken to a place where there is no oxygen, the flame goes out. Now, we can't see carbon dioxide inside of this jar. Can you? It's just clear. We can't see it. Now there's still some smoke here. But because carbon dioxide is heavier than oxygen, it stays inside and it doesn't allow oxygen to penetrate. So when we light a match and we put inside and because we don't have oxygen, the flame goes out. That proves that carbon dioxide is inside the jar. This is also the same chemicals or the same gas that is used on fire extinguishers. And that's why we use that to put out fires because once we blow carbon dioxide to the fire, it extinguishes, it puts out the fire because there is no oxygen on carbon dioxide. Even though we can't see carbon dioxide, but we know that there's carbon dioxide here because the flame was extinguished. The flame went out as soon as we put it inside. Now, in today's story, today's lesson, we are going to learn about a story of, on the, of the Israelites, where the Israelites were fighting a bigger power just like the carbon dioxide heavier than oxygen. And the Israelites were trying to fight that, but they didn't know how, even though they couldn't see it, but how God helped them and how they needed to have faith to fight that power that was stronger than they than them. So stick around, don't forget, the carbon dioxide, the gas, and what it does, puts out the fire. You can't see it, but it's here. It's called faith. We have to believe. Let's hear the story later today on how the Israelites had to depend on God and how they had to have faith in God to fight the fight that was stronger than they were. Than they were. So stick around. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Ask mom and dad to see if they can help you do this experiment at home. And now you know that vinegar and baking soda creates the gas called carbon 
dioxide. Awesome. Now that we experience the carbon dioxide experiment, I'm going to invite you guys to sing the song of the day one more time. All right, did you have fun singing the song again? Do you remember singing the song here at Kids Connection? Well, very soon we're gonna be singing that song together again here at Kids Connection. Keep praying for our return to our church and hopefully it'll be very soon and I can't wait to see you guys here at Kids Connection. Now, I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes so we can finish our program with a prayer today. Dear God, Thank you so much for all your power and thank you because we have the faith in you. Thank you because we trust you and thank you because you are good. Help us to continue to trust you even though all these things are happening around us. And help us to continue to be good boys and girls to glorify your name. Be with us today now that we learn more about you in our lesson. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for praying with us. Thank you for being a part of another Kids Connection program. Here are a couple announcements for you. Mom, Dad, today is the second Sabbath of the month, June 13. And this afternoon, we have Parents Connection. We're gonna connect on Zoom. 
So mom and dad, you are welcome to connect with other moms and dads. And we're going to be talking and chatting, making sure that everyone is okay this afternoon at 2.30. Okay? Via Zoom. Now, remember that I was saying that this week was a hot week? And whoa, it was hot. Today's also going to be a hot day. But we have something very cool happening. Guess what we're going to do? We are going to celebrate the graduates. Oh, wow. This is so nice. Were you, have you graduated from kindergarten? Or do you know someone who graduated from eighth grade? Or do you know someone who graduated from college or from high school or from any higher degree? Well, this afternoon, we are going to honor all those people who have graduated right here at church, at Vallejo Drive Church. How is that? A few members, some members of the church, including the pastors, I am also going to be there. We have decorated our cars with balloons, with signs, with, with whistles and bells and drums and music. And this afternoon, we are going to be in the church's parking lot between 4 and 5.30 for an hour and a half. And we are going to invite everyone who have graduated in this past week or the week before or this year if you have graduated come by the church we are throwing a party for you it's a drive-through party it's a drive-through graduates celebration and we're going to cheer you up we're going to wish you success we are going to sing with you we're gonna jump up and down and down with joy because you deserve to, to be the honor. You have accomplished something amazing. You graduated. Did you graduate kindergarten? If you did, ask mom and dad to bring you to the Vallejo Drive Church parking lot this afternoon starting at 4 o'clock. You're going to drive through and all the cars are going to be there and we're going to, we're going to celebrate your graduation with you come on by say hello if you don't if you haven't graduated ask mom and dad to come anyways decorate your car so we can help honor other people and we're going to recognize what they did and the accomplish the accomplishment that they had so come on come on by the church this afternoon and we're we're hoping that you guys can join us now this is today tomorrow tomorrow is sunday Sunday the 14th, we are going to ask mom and dad to join us for a church business meeting. It is important that you join us tomorrow. We want to hear what you have to say. We want to join forces with you because it is our church. It is our voice, your church, your voice. We want to hear your opinion and we invite you to be a part of that. If you haven't received the email with the invitation for the business meeting tomorrow, just email the church, Vallejo at graceandcondition.com and say, I didn't receive the email to join the business meeting on Sunday. Can you send it to me, please? We'll go ahead and we'll send the invitation. There's a link there for Zoom. Log in at 9.30 for prayer time or at 10 o'clock for our meeting. We're going to be discussing some important things about our church and we're going to be making some important decisions as well and it is good for all the members of Alejo Drive Church to be there and support the pastors and support the, the people that are waiting for your decision and uh, for your collaboration on what you have to say. So don't forget Zoom tomorrow at 9.30 for prayer or 10 o'clock for the meeting and it sh we should be done before noon. Um, hopefully okay so we're we're hoping to see mom and dad tomorrow in our meeting great well now let's go ahead and jump right into your lesson the teachers have prepared the lesson this week and we're going to be talking about faith and how the israelites had to depend on that faith to help them carry through uh, let's watch our story in our sabbath school lesson today Thank you for watching. Thank you for staying around. Thank you for singing with us and worshiping God. We hope to see you 
soon here at Valejo Drive Church and Kids Connection. Until then, I love you guys. See you next week. Bye-bye. Have a great week. Well, good morning, boys and girls. It's good to see you today. I hope you had a good week. I would like to welcome some of you in Sabbath school today. I'd like to welcome Elia and Ethan, Amy and Cameron, Sunny, Rio and Gia, Aiden, Benjamin, Carlina and Sammy, Max and Vita, Janie, Jade and Jax, Caitlin, JR and Seth, Josiah, Ariane, Vashti and Moses, Will and Mia, Nicholas, Luke and John and Andrea, Zori and that baby, Joshua, Jael and Joy, Reese, Tyel, Estella, Federico and Francisco, welcome to you today. It's nice to see you today. Well, we're talking about how the Israelites kept going around in circles. Do you remember last week when we went in circles to get to the ice cream shop? And it didn't work very well, did it? Today we're talking about one of the judges that God had sent to help the Israelites when they repented and said that they were sorry for not obeying him. Follow him when it was convenient for them. Only when there was a judge left to help them, like Joshua. Before Joshua died, he came and said, I want all of you to remember that if you do not obey God, there will be consequences. God will allow your enemies to come and conquer you. But if you do obey God, he will help you to be healthy and happy in this new land that we are living in. Well, the Israelites remembered this while Joshua was living. But when Joshua died, they started worshiping idols. Idols are made out of wood or stone, and they cannot help you. They are not living like our true living God. So they couldn't help them. So then God would allow their enemies to t attack them again. And this time, one of their judges had just died. And so God said, you will have a new judge. Her name is Deborah. And she's different from all the other judges. Why do you think she's different? Well, because she is a woman. And that was very unusual in those days. Deborah was a prophetess, and she told the people the messages that God sent. One day, she had a message for Barak, and the message was, I want you to get together an army of 10,000 men. Well, Barak said to Deborah, I will go to war against the Canaanites, but only if you will come with me. If you don't come with me, then I will not go. Well, Deborah said, you are not trusting God's plan, but I will come with you. So she went with him and they gathered up an army of people and they started going. They went to the mountain. God had told them to go up on a certain mountain and wait there for the enemy's army to come. So they did what God said and they went to the mountain. And then God let the enemy come to them. The enemy did come. Now, there were lots of chariots, and I don't know if you know what a chariot looks like, but let me see if I can show you a little bit of what was happening. It's kind of hard to see because the picture is small, but here's a picture of a chariot. It's kind of like a wagon, but it's pulled by horses. Well, all the chariots came, and God caused a storm to come and it started raining really really hard guess what happened to the chariots 
Well, they got stuck in the mud by the river. They couldn't move because their wheels were stuck in the mud. Well, the rain was pouring down and the Israelites came down the mountain and they frightened the army so badly they couldn't move their chariots because they were stuck. So all of the soldiers jumped out of their chariots and ran away. And the Israelite army chased them and they captured the whole army. Just as God had planned and promised, the army was in a panic and Deborah and Barak and the whole army came down the mountain on top of them. Now the leader of this whole army was very, very frightened and he ran away to hide. Where do you think that he went to hide? He went and escaped to a tent where he thought some of his friends lived. He saw a woman there this was her tent. Her name was Jael. And he went to her and he said, don't tell anyone I'm here. I need a place to hide. So she said, okay, I won't tell anyone. Go ahead and go into the tent and I will hide you. He asked her for a drink of water and she gave him a drink of milk from her jug. And then he laid down and he was so tired that he fell asleep. She covered him with a blanket. And while he was in the tent, she did something that gave her much honor in later years. She went into the tent and she killed the leader of the army. Now God had said that Barak, because he doubted the plan, would not have the biggest honor of this war. The biggest honor would go to Jael, a woman. Well, Deborah had trusted God's plan and she had talked to Barak about it and he also trusted the plan. Now, when Barak came to the tent where the leader of the army was hiding, Jael took him into the tent and showed him what she had done. And she deserved the honor for that deed. She had showed him how God's plan actually worked. From that time on, Israel became stronger and stronger against Canaan. They destroyed Canaan and they destroyed the king and then they had peace for 40 years. Well, Deborah had a big responsibility, didn't she? She told the people about God's plans. Do you think that was a hard thing for her to do or do you think it was easy? I think it was sometimes difficult, especially since she was a woman and women didn't usually speak out like that back then. What do you think Barak felt when he saw the rainstorm and saw that the chariots were all getting stuck? He had been worried that maybe the plan wasn't so good, but he found out that God's plan is always better than any plan that we could make. Do you think that Jael was frightened when she saw the captain of the army coming to her tent? She might have been a little frightened, but she also trusted God. She was very brave. How do you think that it felt being part of God's plan and being chosen by him? Well, God showed again how gracious and merciful he was to the Israelites. Over and over they doubted and disobeyed him. Yet the Israelites always received undeserved favor and grace from God. Whenever they turned to God and said they were sorry for their sins, he rescued them from their enemies. He raised up many judges to help them out. He, he gave them his unlimited compassion and mercy. Why do you think he just wanted to do that all the time, even though they kept disobeying him over and over again? Well, one of the many reasons is found in our verse, and we'll do that in just a minute. But God is merciful, and that is just the way he is. When the Israelites depended on him, he gave them the victory. And depending on God will always lead to his help. 
We depend on God to help us with a lot of things, and we trust him and obey him. Did the Israelites have to obey him in order to get his help? Yes, they did. And that's true for us as followers of Jesus. We have to listen and obey his commands when we make our own choices and our own plans without asking him what he has in store for us, then sometimes our plans can go wrong. So we need to turn to God for help and direction. While God doesn't expect us to do things all by ourselves, we can turn to him and we can pray about our troubles, we can ask him for his help, we can study our Bible so that we know what he wants us to do. That is our written guidebook for everyone. There are many things that we can do. We depend on God to keep his promises. What if you had a friend who sometimes lied to you and told you lies and didn't keep their promises? Would you trust that friend? No, you probably couldn't trust that friend, but God is not like that. He always keeps his promises. When you have doubts and confusing thoughts about God, you can talk to him about it and find some of his promises in his word, the Bible. One of those promises is that he's promised to always love us. This can help us to feel very loved because we know that he always keeps the promise to love us. Another one of promises is God gives us peace. This can help when we have troubles in our family, if someone is sick or injured, or if somebody loses their job, we can trust God to give us peace. Now, another promise is that God is always there. He never leaves us. It can help you feel secure when you know that you always have a helper with you, no matter where you go. He's promised to answer our prayers. Sometimes he doesn't answer them exactly the way we'd like. We always want to hear yes. Sometimes he says, no, that's not good for you. Or sometimes he says, wait a while. God's prayer, your prayers will always be answered though. He promises to always do what's the best thing for us. He can see the end from the beginning and he always knows if things are going to help us or hurt us. Well, we have learned that it's a good thing to trust. We trust God. We obey what he's asked us to do. Now, I would like to sing this song for you, and I think that we should take this as our theme song. It's an old song. I'm sure your parents probably know this song. And it goes like this. Trust and obey, for there's no other to trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Now I'm going to sing it again, and I want you to see if you can sing along with me this time. Trust and obey, for there's no to trust and obey. Well, let's take a look at our memory verse. We have been saying a memory verse that comes from Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 17, and that is in the second part, and it talks about God's character. So, we remember the sign for God is this, God is gracious and compassionate, slow to get angry, and quick to forgive. God is love. Nehemiah 9, verse 17. Let's try it again. God is gracious and compassionate, slow to get angry, and quick to forgive. 
God is love. Did you get it? Let's try it again and then you can practice it again later on. God is gracious and compassionate, slow to get angry and quick to forgive. God is love. You can practice that again later with your parents. I'd like to say a little prayer with you. Please fold your hands. Dear Jesus, thank you that you have so many lessons in your word, the Bible, that can help us to know you and to love you. Please help us to trust you and to obey your commands. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now I would like to show you your craft. Sorry, I had to find it real quick. This is a picture of Deborah and it says on the top, Deborah trusted God's plan. You can color it. You can also draw around here some things that you'd like to trust God with. You could put that you'd like to trust God during this pandemic. You can trust God when you're with your parents in the car driving somewhere. You can trust God to help you to obey your mommy and daddy. There are all kinds of things you can trust God for. And parents, on the back side, there is a daily, there is a weekly plan for you to help your children to understand a little more. Thank you for being with us. Have a good day and a good week. Hope to see you again soon.